What's happening guys? I've got a fun story. It's not every day that you get to put a joker down on an airplane. Recently, my beard left my face unprotected, but at least I'm protected with concealed carry liability insurance through USCCA. Some of you are thinking that segue sucked. No, it didn't. It was amazing, awesome, fantastic. This video is sponsored by USCCA. We appreciate them because if I ever I get in some sticky situation where I have to defend myself and go to a court of law because that's where everything goes, I will have USCCA in my corner. Furthermore, USCCA provides all kinds of online training so that before, during, or after some violent encounter, they got you covered with knowledge tools. You can try membership today. If you don't like it, cancel any time. Visit uscca.com slash warpoet for a special offer. And now onward to the video. So we're about to take off. All the other passengers are lobbying for overhead space for their luggage. People are finding their seats and my wife and I are seated toward the back of the plane. Now, my wife all of a sudden bumps me of like, John, go help. And I didn't know what had happened. Later, I would find out or kind of on the way that uh, some young dude looked like an older teenager, probably about six foot tall or taller uh, and very skinny, had his mom or guardian by the collar, had pulled her uh, toward him. This is right by the bathroom in the back and then punched her. And so my wife immediately like, John, go get him of like, uh, what is the uh, command for the dog? Like point of like, I'm alive, danger. I'm immediately on it. So I get up and I move to the back and there's this distressed uh, teenage dude uh, with flight attendants around him and kind of like this semicircle. It's all kind of right there at the back of the plane and they're very upset. He's upset. The guardian is making excuses and, and whatnot and trying to be like, oh no, no, it's okay. And the flight attendants are like, no, he punched you. And she's like, it's okay. And trying to make light of this where the flight uh, crew clearly saw a crime uh, committed. And still this kid is extremely agitated. And so I was there and then there's this one other passenger that got up and went to the back with me where everyone else saw it, knew something was happening. There was one other guy and he's kind of shuffles the back and he's just watching very seriously. And I immediately connected with this guy. I'm like, this guy's a warrior poet. I like this guy. And uh, so we're just kind of watching this, not doing anything because no violence was happening at that moment. We had missed that kind of point. And so we're just watching, ready to be good uh, Samaritans and citizens uh, should uh, we be needed. And so what we did is I saw where he was positioned and I'm kind of like, you take six, I'll take 12. And I, I kind of pulled around them. So I was at one side and he was at the other. And so we were able to kind of uh, uh, converge in whichever place a violent altercation might go down. At that point, we just watched for another moment and he, uh, this uh, teenager put hands on his guardian and ended up start pushing her away and his back was toward me. And so I immediately grabbed him from the behind. I think I, I pulled his uh, jaw up and I grabbed his arm behind and then uh, I, I basically pushed kind of his lower body and legs away. It, it's this seamless, nice way I take people down from the rear where they, it, it, it just went very well. He went straight down. I realized as soon as he started attacking his guardian, presumably his guardian, uh, he was committing a crime in the state of Georgia. And I don't know how it is on, you know, on a flight. Is that any different? I was stuck thinking through the moral problems, the legal problems, and then the kind of like the tactical execution problems and the skill sets required to put somebody down quickly who may not want to go down. But as soon as he put hands on him, I'm like, nope, uh -uh. and I took him down. I put him on his side. I remember my arm was up underneath his back and I choked it in tight uh, so that he couldn't uh, use his arm. And then I put all my body weight on top of him to pin his other arm uh, like that. And then I had my left leg kind of over his hip to immobilize any movement. And, and I snugged it all up uh, tight like any good jiu-jitsu practitioner would. Uh, and so suffice it to say of like this kid wasn't going anywhere. He tried to flail. He realized he didn't have an inch to play with. And so he just kind of went still with me. And I remember, right, he wouldn't make eye contact with me. I'm like, look at me, look at me. And it, uh, finally kind of uh, cuts eyes over me and says, if you hurt her, I will hurt you. If you hurt her, I will hurt you bad. And I remember I, I repeated that a few times to make sure he got it. And as soon as he was calm and chill, I picked him back up, 
And with this new attitude adjustment, this kid was extremely nice and compliant and not aggressive at all anymore. And so that was nice. The flight attendants, everyone's just kind of watching this go down like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, this is, this is spicy. Uh, and I wasn't really cognizant of them. Then the, the, uh, the pilot comes back, uh, heard everything that had gone down and then deplanes uh, uh, this dude and his guardian. I go back to my seat and I'm just chilling. And then the very first flight attendant comes by and she's just gushing of like, Oh my God, we didn't know what to do. Thank you so much. And she's gushing. And then they, uh, she, uh, she disappears. Somebody else comes and then she comes back and she's got a, a trash bag filled with all of the goodies. This, the stuff that the snooty aristocrats in first class get with all their weird Swiss chocolates and stuff. They don't even show to us peasants back in coach. She gives me this bag filled with all the peanuts, all the peanuts. You didn't get peanuts. I got your peanut. I got all the snacks. And so like literally like a bag, a trash bag full of the stuff. And then they give us a, a voucher and stuff. And I'm looking at my wife being like, wow, this, this is a lot different treatment than I usually get. I remember flying back from Africa. Uh, they were uh, extremely upset that I was not taking the proper precautions. And this is late in the, in the, uh, the COVID game. Uh, so I, I just had no more patience for this. And then when I realized that, they, you know, of like, all right, I've reached the point where I'm almost getting kicked off the plane. I knew exactly where the line was and I would always kind of get right there to it, but never actually get kicked off. I just wanted to snuggle up and make tyranny really hard on everyone. But what I wanted to point out with all of this stuff, guys, is I was praised one day and hated the, the one before it. In one context, I was exactly who they wanted and they needed and they were so grateful that a guy like me was there, a protector, a defender, someone who wouldn't, uh, wouldn't tolerate the bullying and the hurting of someone else. But on the other hand, when it was this other context, they hated me. They didn't want me anywhere around, but I didn't change. I was the exact same dude for the last few years, praised in one ca uh, case and excoriated and despised in the other. And I'm not shifting. It's just people's upset regarding masculinity is. Uh, you, you want uh, strong men there uh, to protect you and to provide for you and to build society and to safeguard it when everything's going bad. And when that's not happening, you would like to completely push them away. I just noticed that as there's a war on masculinity in general, I'd say uh, don't bow to it. Being a protector can oftentimes be an extremely thankless job but that's not why we do it. We don't do it to receive just the praises and adulations of our fellow men. We do it because we're loving protectors and that's how we're wired and we're gonna to continue to grow that way because that's how we roll. And so you warrior poets who won't receive adequate thank you for being as you are, here's your thank you from me. You're a force for good in a world that hates you but desperately needs you. So keep it up, guys. I'm on the same journey with you. Love you. Train hard, train smart. Stay free. You thought you were done with me. I already had this beautiful sign off, but check it out. This month is December. USCCA is a channel sponsor. has all kinds of goodies that they'll give you when you join USCCA. I got a link right here. Follow that and you're able to try USCCA risk-free. So you have concealed carry liability insurance and a bunch of goodies. Cancel anytime. And there is our channel sponsor, Fist Bop. Way to go, USCCA. And now for reals, yo, we're out.